This is the PSA Admiral 1911, and this is the Springfield Operator 1911. Both of them trade on 45 ACP, $500 and $1,000. Does money really buy you a better 1911? Let's find out. So far for the year 2023, Palmetto State Armory has been absolutely killing it. And recently they came out with a 1911 that is actually produced by Rock Island Armory for them. What I wanted to determine today is that if this budget friendly TAC Ultra 1911 is just as good or worthy as the Springfield Operator in 45 ACP. Again, both these pistols are gonna be in 45 ACP and both of them have identical features with the exception of their sights and some of the finishes that are on the two of them. But let's cover everything that Palmetto State Armory came out with or had Rock Island Armory make for them. From Rock Island Armory, their 1911s in general are not forged like you get with the Springfields. And however, they are actually going to be a cast, let's say lower and upper slide on here, okay? But the overall fit and finish on it is really good. There's no wobble. And this is a very, very tight 1911, which is what I like to see, especially. The slide to frame fit is really good. It feels, let's say, I don't wanna say buttery smooth, but it's really, really smooth. It does have a one piece guide rod on here that is really good to see. Uh, it, generally speaking, a one piece guide rod on a 1911 will make for a very smooth operation. The slide itself and the frame are both parkerized. Now that's far different than what you get here on the operator for Springfield Armory. Now the operator is Cerakoted and it is also forged. Slide to frame fit on this pistol is excellent as well. And this slide itself is buttery smooth. I have shot this pistol an absolute crap ton. It's one of my most favorite 1911s to shoot. And so it's a good benchmark in my opinion for this test or this comparison because this pistol will cost you about $500 and this pistol will cost you about $1,000. So in reality, what I wanna answer for you is is the $1,000 pistol worth it or would you be just as happy with the $500 model from Palmetto State? A couple other things you have on here, you have nice checkering with wood grips. There is some front strap linear checkering here on the frame from PSA. And then the back strap is a standard, let's say 30 LPI checkering that you have there. So good gripping surfaces are decent. However, I do wish for me personally, the grip design or what they went with for your grip plates was something more like what you get with the operator for Springfield and a very aggressive grip texturing. Cause I just like that aggressive feel in my hands when you're shooting the 45. However, I think it's gonna be good enough and there won't be any issues. There are front and rear cocking serrations here on the slide. They are deep enough, honed and machined well. I don't notice any issues whatsoever with them being kind of like bird or anything like that. And again, I can't probably stress it enough that for the price this pistol comes in at, I wouldn't guess that it only costs $500 because it feels better than that. Now the slide and let's say the barrel itself is not going to be a ramped barrel, which the Springfield operator does not have a ramp barrel either. It's actually just, you know, machined or cut into the frame. And this one's the same way. This Springfield operator, I have shot an absolute crap ton of hollow points to this pistol. I've shot ball ammo, lead nose. I mean, if you could name an ammo that I've shot through it, this pistol has functioned reliably. And if I was to give you a roundabout round count through this Springfield operator, it's probably got close to 3,000 rounds through it now at this point. And I've shot it a lot and I've shot tons of different ammo through it. So that's good to see. This pistol itself, not sure yet. We haven't touched it as far as for shooting. So we will shoot hollow points through it. We'll shoot your standard, you know, ball ammunition, the 230 grain, 45 ACP stuff, the Lord's caliber. We'll get out there, we'll shoot it, and we'll see how it does and see how it functions and feeds. The magazine quality, it looks great. They're Act mags, made in Italy, very similar to what you're getting from the Met Guard that come with the operator. Good quality, eight round magazines with a bump pad on the bottom, which I absolutely prefer. I, let's say I despise the flat plate ones because they just don't fit all that well, and I don't like having to insert them but these overall fit and finish on the magazines is good. It appears they want a very good quality magazine manufacturer on here. Now the trigger, 1911s, 2011s in general have very good triggers. This trigger has some take up, a little bit of creep, and then a clear and defined wall once you hit that little bit of creep. Okay, 
Overall though, the pull weight on it is good. I'd say four to five pounds, but it's a good crisp break after you get that little bit of creep past that wall. There is, but again, there is some creep in there. Now the memory bump you have back here on the end, it is actually textured and it is an extended beaver tail. So you shouldn't really have any issues with slide bite here with this particular 1911. The safety selector switches that are on the PSA Admiral, they are ambi and they are on both sides. Let's see the safety function for that. Uh, I'd say pretty mushy, uh, actually very mushy. There's no real positive click up or down. It's kind of just a big pile of mush, if I'm being honest about that. Uh, big fan of most PSA stuff. However, the safeties on this for me personally are probably its greatest downfall outside of I don't like the grips, but they're just, there's no positive detent or click in there, which you usually see. And in particular, what you definitely see here with the Springfield operator. So very obvious that you could tell that the safety detent and all that feels good. Now, left-handed operation for the safety feels the same as left and right. I don't notice any binding or anything like that, so that's good. And what that tells me too is that it was fit properly and actually put in there and the, the parts fit well. Granted, the bit of, let's say, the mush that you get in there and the no real positive clicking, I really don't care for. But as long as it functions right and works properly, it's not a big deal. Skeletonized hammer here on the rear. And then you have adjustable sights. I do like the sights a lot. Both of these pistols have a three dot style system and not really sure why any pistols nowadays have three dots. I'm not a fan of it. However, it's okay. And they can be shot because you could of course just black that out with a Sharpie on the rear. However, I do like the fact it's got adjustable sights and a fiber optic front sight. Now the Springfield operator has night sights on it. So it's got like, I've blacked out the rear here on this one. Okay, it's got a tactical racking edge. If you want to use it like that, you can. And then also on the front, it does have a white dot night sight. So defensive purposes, you probably do want night sights. However, range use and things like that, the fiber optic with the light on the front of the gun, because both these have rails, will pose no issues at nighttime. You'll be able to shoot just fine with a light. So can't knock it for that. I do like it. Now, what I will say in particular, what I really noticed is for me, I'm kind of 50-50 depending on the gun on if I use my support hand to drop the slide after actually making a reload, okay? What I've noticed though, is that with the Admiral, it has an extended slide release or slide lock lever, and it would be very easy for me to hit without ultimately breaking my firing hand. Now with the operator, I can hit it because of the grip. However, a lot of times when I do this pistol, if I don't just come over the top and grip and rip it, then I'll come up and actually hit it with my support hand thumb. So. Fit and finish wise, I think that they did a really, really good job, especially for a pistol that comes in at a price range of $500. It's an absolutely fantastic pistol. It's not as refined as the $1,000 operator, but ultimately I think it's a really good pistol for somebody wanting a 1911 and 45 ACP with a good trigger, good features, built fairly well, good sights on it. And at the end of the day, we're gonna get out on the range. We're gonna see how it shoots because Although it costs $500, my guess is that this thing is probably gonna shoot really well. And honestly, about anybody could be happy shooting the Lord's caliber. First rounds of the PSA Admiral. First 16 rounds in, uh, pistol shoots good. Overall, the trigger feels really good. Uh, maybe sprung a tight bit on the heavier side, I would say. But overall, I mean, the thing is really shooting good. Uh, accurate, I'm not noticing anything like that. Sights seem like they're on from the get-go. But again, that trigger feels good and the memory bump beaver tail here, the grip safety, feels like it sensitized properly. I'm not having any issues. Sometimes with the high grip that I use, I've had issues with 1911s, but this one, not the case. Let's talk through the trigger pull here a little bit. So take up, take up, take up, take up. So there's take up. And a little bit of mush, but a defined wall, which is good to see. Hmm. 
It may have just been my thumb to come up and possibly hit that slight release. Yeah, I mean, this trigger has a very good reset on it. Trigger overall is good, and for a $500 1911, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Good sights. They probably shoot a touch on the low side, I would say. But overall, these sights that are on here, magazine release button shoots the magazines out, just like you would expect. It's definitely sprung a tight, uh, it's definitely a little bit on the heavy side for how it's sprung. So two times now, I think what's going on there where you saw it locked back um, was actually just my thumb coming up and hitting that slide stop and actually catching it. Disclaimer, you will see I'm wearing my hood up. It is not that cold today. It's just that buggy with mosquitoes and I'm sick of them biting me through the top of my dome piece. But what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna shoot this pistol versus the Springfield operator side by side, see how the two of them shoot. Okay. Whew. Right out of the gate, uh, as soon as I rack the slide, I can tell the difference in overall smoothness, or say fit and finish, that the Springfield operator does feel nicer racking the slide. In addition to that, like I said before, that safety selector switch on the operator is smooth. Overall recoil on pulse, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it. The operator itself under recoil feels a little bit more forgiving. And I think that's because I think it's sprung a little bit better. I think they must have different weight recoil springs in them in general. But trigger wise, uh, the trigger on the operator is lighter and it's a little bit more crisp with uh, less take up. There's less take up here with the operator and there's no creep whatsoever with it. So it is a better trigger. You gotta take into consideration, the operator costs twice as much as the Admiral. The Admiral is an excellent pistol, in my opinion, for a $500 1911. Do I think it's better than the operator? I don't have to shoot this pistol again or that one again to tell you that no, I don't think it is, but I think it's an excellent option if you don't wanna spend the money for an operator, but still want a 1911 with a light rail and a lot of the features like the Springfield operator has. So I wanna show you the, the main difference, what I'm noticing here with the triggers between the Admiral and the operator. So there's your take up, take up, and there's some creep in there. See a creep, creep, that's already after the take up. And then there's your wall. Now the operator, okay, take up. You can actually hear that wall hit it and there's no creep. So wall, no creep. Okay, and what we'll notice too, I'll show you, is that chances are because of that, you can really tell is that, with that without that take up, like that one has, and without having that bit of creep in there, if you're making precision shots, you're basically like a precision rifle with a really good trigger. You're, you're taking out any kind of shooter air or reducing the fact that you could input shooter air by not having that. So this one also has relatively short reset. And then the, PSA Admiral, or this Rock Island style here like this, okay? The reset is about the same. I say reset wise, they're about the same for overall length. But again, that take up, there's some mush in there, and then a wall. So again, that's something you can definitely take into consideration when making precision shots. I got a grab bag of old 45 caliber hollow points here. So what I'm gonna do is this operator has shot these all just fine. I've never had any issues. Again, this is a giant grab bag of garbage, old per se, 45 ammo. Uh, a lot of it's some Federal Hydra shocks, uh, they're plus P stuff. So we'll shoot it out of here and see how it does. 
Because a lot of times with 1911s, what you'll notice that they don't have a ramp barrel is that they will not actually feed hollow points all that well, and they really only shoot ball stuff well. But I don't think that's going to be the case, or at least I'm hoping not. The ammo up now. This is going to be that hollow point stuff. It's a bunch of like old duty ammo. So let's try it. That's some spicy old hollow points, but nonetheless function reliably through a whole entire magazine, which is good. Not even any kind of hiccups whatsoever. I don't think we'd have any issues. I could probably sit out here and shoot a pile of hollow points all night long. The PSA Admiral, I think is an excellent entry level, light railed 1911 for you to buy. At $500, it's not gonna break the bank. It's gonna accomplish about everything you want in a 1911. It seems like it's built well, it shoots well. It actually shoots great in my opinion functions reliably, and overall is a lot of fun to shoot like every pistol chambered in the Lord's caliber. So if you're a big fan of 1911s and you're not looking to break the bank, you don't want to jump up to the thousand dollar operator from Springfield or some of the other manufacturers that make good high-end factory 1911s, this PSA Admiral could be just right for you. But until next time, guys, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.